Hello, I am Jayesh Gandhi. Welcome to this tutorial. We are going to talk about programming the 8051 microcontroller. To learn the 8051 programming, we need a simulation tool. The tool which we are going to use is called EdSim 51. EdSim 51 is developed for teachers and students. It is available on the website www.edsim.com. 51.com a lot of other e-resource is also available for learning 8051 after downloading adsim 51 unzip the download to some suitable folder create a shortcut on the desktop to adsim 51 jar file now you are ready to launch adsim 51 this is the adsim 51 website you can find all the details. Now let us have an introduction to the AdSim 51 environment. Whatever you see on the screen, it is a part of the AdSim 51 environment. This part is broadly divided into two. On one side you find the 8051 microcontroller registers, special purpose registers, data memory, program memory, port pins and all that. On the other side, you have a blank area where you can write your program. Let us see both the parts in more details. In the 8051 area, you have registers from R0 to R7, register B, the accumulator, PSW, IP, IE, PCON, DPH and DPL, and the stack pointer. You also find the ports P0, P1, P2 and P3. The pins associated to ports are also shown and the bits associated with the port in the latch they are also shown. Special purpose registers related to timer counter are shown over here and the special purpose registers related to serial communication are also shown adjacent to the timer counter SFRs. Below on this screen you find a block which is having a title in a switch called data memory. This can be toggled into a title which could say that there is a code memory. So you can view the data memory that is address is 0, 0 to 7F, the RAM address is of 8051 and the code memory starting from address 00. On the top you find system clock that is initialized at 12 megahertz. You can use your own clock frequency and accordingly your execution time for the instruction will be modified. Now let us come down to the other part that is the editor part. It has got a large blank area where you can write your program. Once you write the program, you can do various operations with that. You can save the program, load a previously saved program, create a new program file, reset the processor that is done through RST switch, assemble the program that is done through the AWSM switch, run the program, copy and paste the code as you require. Below the switches you find a window where certain messages will be displayed by the assembler related to the assembly of the program. As an introductory program, we would like to write a small program which adds two numbers given in register R0 and R1 and the result of the addition is to be stored in R2. So let us see what we can do about this. So that is what we want to do. Write a program to add two numbers loaded in R0 and R1 and place the result in R2. A small program which will do our job is written over here. 4 5 is loaded in R0 with the move instruction. A0 is loaded in R1 with the move instruction. The hash before, before the numbers indicate that they are numbers. Otherwise they will be treated as addresses. 
there is zero preceding a in the second instruction indicates or tells the assembler that this is a number every number should start with a numeric value and not alpha a is an alpha and therefore it has to be preceded by zero the third instruction moves the content of r0 into a this is required because for any arithmetic logic operation the accumulator is one of the operands so you have to bring the first operand in register a then the add instruction will add the content of a and r1 and place the result in a so the result is in a register and finally we move the content of a register to r0 now once the program is entered and saved you can assemble the program in the message window you find that there are no errors the first instruction is loaded at 000 hex the second at 0002 0004 0005 and 0006 when you execute the first instruction this value 45 will go into r0 now the execution can be done in two ways one is by executing one instruction at a time this is called step operation and second is by running the whole program simultaneously this is called the run operation we'll use the step operation and say check the 8051 registers and their status and what changes the instruction make on the various registers so let us execute the first instruction move r0 comma hash 45h the number 45 goes into register r0 execute the second instruction the number a0 goes into r1 execute the third instruction now here we can make a note of one more point that this address shown over here is the address loaded in the program counter so it is pointing to the instruction to be executed so let us execute the third instruction the content of r0 is copied into register a execute the fourth instruction the content of r1 is added to a and the result is placed in a execute the fifth instruction the result from a has gone into register r2 now the sum of the two numbers is displayed over here that is the result which also goes to the r2 now here in this block at present it is showing the value of p1 if i write down p s w then it will show the value of psw this is your carry flag cy auxiliary carry flag 0 that is the user defined flag rs1 and rs0 register bank select overflow this is not used and this is your parity flag so depending on the arithmetic operation these flags will be modified you can try out various different values and see what impact it makes on the flag registers i hope the information provided in this tutorial is useful thank you very much